Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game to the Con video, we're going to be discussing a whole slew of Ryzen rumours. Yes, it is certainly the season for Ryzen rumours, and I have a feeling these are going to continue up until the processor's release. We're going to be talking about things such as possible models available for launch, power consumption, more stuff on overclocking, the IPC targets actually being exceeded by AMD, and a whole bunch more besides. I'd like to thank Rod for a couple of things which I hadn't actually heard of myself, so it's very kind of him to message us once again via Facebook. With all that said, before we jump into this 100%, I need to get a bit of house clearing in order. There is going to be a lot of stuff coming up on the channel over the next couple of weeks. We have KB Lake being sent to us for review, so that's going to take priority. I believe we're receiving that tomorrow, um, so that's going to be kind of cool because it's going to be a high-end motherboard, plus, uh, of course, the chip and other bits are going to be reviewed. Um, I have a couple of interviews. I can't say who they're with or what the subject matters are, but I think you're going to probably find them quite interesting coming up once again uh, as soon as possible, as soon as I get the responses. There is a whole bunch of keyboard and other component reviews as well. And basically, I did hear a whole bunch of you respond regarding the CPU side of things, how it had been uh, fairly well received. That was my analysis and breakdown of how CPUs work, or at least the, the basic gist of it. And so I'm going to be doing the same for GPUs. I know I mentioned this in a previous video. I just want to reiterate it in case you missed it. And there is going to be a few other bits coming up as well. Anyway, I think I've talked enough about that. Let's jump into the rumours. Now, one of the, probably the key ones, is that Canard PC, who of course originally leaked a review, um, I know I'm saying it in kind of a mean tone there, but it was pretty early engineering sample um, silicon. So I guess, you know, your opinions on whether that's valid or not is down to you. But they have actually said that AMD are already starting to manufacture cheap 4-core Ryzen SMTs, uh, sorry, 4-core CPUs, but with SMT disabled. Now, we can probably hazard a guess that this is going to either be to cut into the i5 market even further by possibly undercutting Intel to a great degree, and the other benefit is that if, for the sake of argument, a certain amount of cash isn't um, working on a particular system, on a particular um, CCX, let's say for the sake of argument, only 4 megabytes, and I don't know what their yields or what they're going to split this up to, but let's say 4 megabytes, uh, remember each CCX has 8 megabytes, so let's say 4 megabytes of level 3 is functional, and perhaps a few other bits and pieces also, um, they're having issues with those during the yields, this means that they could basically have very cost-effective 4-core processors, and potentially, this could be really bad news for Intel if AMD can market them at a really cheap price. Now, I guess it's going to depend on what the performance is. Uh, at a guess, I'm assuming they're going to hit between that maybe i3 to maybe i5, which could potentially, and I keep saying potentially because I do want to wait until we see official benchmarks, or more specifically, I get the benchmark damn thing, but it could really impact, let's say, the 7600K's sales figures, especially if they can be very aggressive in pricing. Another tidbit is that the chips do appear, and we're referring, just to clarify, for the 8-core 16-thread models, to hit over or at least 4 gigahertz. but the wattage is about 100-plus doing that. Now, supposedly, AMD are trying to get the power consumption down using a BIOS update. Now, I can tell you something. This is not new. In fact, early revisions of the KB Lake BIOS, which is of course the Intel 200 series boards, actually had similar, and still do actually have similar issues. Um, essentially what happened is that the BIOS, what would what manufacturers would do, the, the motherboard manufacturers, they would often put in extra volts in certain of the auxiliary voltage parts of the uh, chip. So not necessarily uh, the actual V-core, but other bits and pieces, for example, memory controllers or whatever else. And it would, in turn, bump up the heat quite considerably. So I'm going to make the assumption that AMD are probably trying to do something in the background, trying to figure out what the lowest voltages they can do. And naturally, this will bring down not only the power consumption of the of the system, but it will also bring down those temperatures, which, let's face it, are very, very important. Uh, continuing, 
to my thoughts on that subject, I'm actually not terribly against 100 watt. I mean, but then again, I guess they're different architectures. And I think I remember the 60, sorry, the um, the 8 core model Ryzen is like 95 watts target. So really 100 watts, although we don't know exactly how much over 100, I'm going to say it's maybe below 100. So let's say 105, 110, maybe 115. Let's say 110 for the sake of this video. That's not terribly out of target. And I imagine if you've got a reasonable cooler, so you're not making do with like a really basic one. Let's say you've got a high-end AIO or perhaps a water cooling loop, like a dedicated water loop, uh, water loop, excuse me, something along those lines, you're probably going to be okay. But obviously, lower temperatures, lower power consumption only mean that you can push higher clocks, means extra system stability, and perhaps more importantly in the eyes of AMD, or just as importantly in the eyes of AMD, it looks really good for when people are doing benchmarks, because some folks are really concerned about heat and uh, power consumption, especially heat, because at the end of the day, it can mean that you require a higher end cooler, which also adds to the cost or perhaps the bulk. And this can particularly impact folks who have a smaller form factor case. Anyway, this one is perhaps one of the better um, pieces of news, and that is AMD and their IPC target versus excavator. So you might recall that they had a goal in mind when they were desi designing excuse me, Ryzen. That was that they wanted a single thread performance to be, uh, the uh, IPC, just to clarify, to be 40% higher than their previous excavator architecture. Well, according to the latest reports, they've not actually beat, sorry, they've not just beaten 40%, they've smashed it into smithereens. It's a, supposedly hitting about 55%. That's an awful lot. I don't know how um, this is going to impact retail uh, silicon. I'm going to make the assumption that this is obviously uh, basically as close to retail as you can probably uh, get. So it's probably going to be like the, um, the, I believe it's A3 revision as a retail silicon. So not only that, but they've probably also fixed some of the BIOS issues. Remember, there were a multitude of problems with Ryzen. Uh, these include, but not limited to, a dodgy memory controller, which was basically keeping memory clocks much lower. Just to clarify, uh, there were a few reports, I believe it was yesterday or the day before I covered these, that the memory runs 3200 megahertz officially, but can go up to 4000 megahertz unofficially. So obviously they've certainly got the memory controller dialed in now, which was a massive problem before. It means obviously in some memory bandwidth uh, usage cases, it was being starved. There were also a few issues regarding the logic of the processor and basically they had to do some error correction. I believe that was done via the BIOS and I don't know how much that hindered performance but some leaks indicated it was quite substantial. Right, there is one final piece of news I have and that is a tentative release window. Now I know what I've said before is probably between February and March, early March to late February appears to be the release date for Ryzen. Now, there is a very interesting session which videocards.com have found. This one tells us that the Ryzen platform, Ryzen CPUs, will launch before GDC 2017. Now, how this works is that at the GDC 2017 uh, conference, Obviously, various speakers will talk about various platforms, software, technology, whatever. So, for example, it might be that in the past they've had someone come in and talk about the wonders of Vulkan or the wonders of DirectX 12 or how a new game engine functions. For example, the folks over at uh, Epic typically do quite a few conferences on Unreal Engine, how to get the most of it on like mobile or whatever. Anyway, I think you get the idea. So, there is a new session that has popped up on the ses ses session scheduler. Jesus, I cannot speak today. And this uh, session says, and I quote, join AMD game engineering team members for an introduction to the recently launched AMD Ryzen CPU, followed by advanced optimization topics, learn about the Zen micro -arch architecture, power management, and so on and so on and so on. Now, 
this tells us that GDC 2017 could possibly be the release window for Ryzen. Just so we're all clear, Ryzen, uh, sorry, GDC takes place on the 27th of February up until March the 3rd. Now, the session date has not been announced yet. So essentially, it could be as late as March the 3rd, but this window does coincide with an awful lot of rumors. Now, do remember that AMD have said that they are not looking to hit the latter part of March. They are not looking to, say, launch this thing on you know, March the 28th or something like that. They do want to get it out earlier. They want it into the hands of folks because they know they're being pretty smart about this. Not only assuming they've got pretty decent yields of Ryzen and therefore they can maintain their um, their talk about, you know, they've got a lot of models available. It won't just be the high end, which makes a lot of sense when you think about it. The trickle down philosophy in that, you know, you've got bidding. So in other words, there are going to be some processes, which as we discussed in the beginning of this video, some processes, some processes will have parts which don't quite make the cut for a particular clock speed or a particular a number of cores therefore you simply resell those at a lower uh, cost at a different model and it means that consumers who don't for example need an 8 core 16 thread processor they could say hey you know what this processor which has just got four cores no hyper threading but absolutely perfect for a che cheap gaming system and then gee because the am4 platform is going to be lasting for like four years amd have actually been pretty smart when it comes to this uh, forward thinking they know that people can buy that, and then, let's say, two years down the line, they could buy Ryzen Plus, whatever that happens to be. And it also makes for a really nice counter to Intel with KB Lake. Now, that's not to say that KB Lake is terrible. KB Lake is actually impressive when it comes to raw clock speed. Like, clock speed-wise, if Intel um, had added an extra two cores to the mainstream uh, KB Lake, it would have been an absolute monster, and I think a lot of the excitement around Ryzen perhaps wouldn't exist. But as it is, for folks who are primarily gaming, KB Lake is certainly very interesting because the pure raw clock speed of KB Lake is, is just ridiculous when you're overclocking. So as it is, it's going to be a very interesting series of, uh, of benchmarks when we start comparing them because, you know, if you have a Ryzen CPU that's running at, let's say, 4 gigahertz, and you have KB Lake, let's say that's pushing, let's say, 5 gigahertz. I mean, 5 gigahertz seems to be pretty okay. In fact, some are hitting, like, 5.2, 5.3. I believe one hit, like, 7 gigahertz. So if you're starting to hit, like, the low 5 gigahertz range with that, one could make a very compelling argument that it's, it's a pretty good platform. So it's going to be a very interesting couple of months um, anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.